this season. It seems like the Brewers keep finding ways to win. Coming into today, they were 4-0 in extra inning games and 4-0 in one run games. They needed extras to decide this one. We'll pick it up top of the fourth. Brewers with the one run lead and Chris Davis blasts one to the right field seats. It's his fourth of the season and puts the crew up 3-1. Bottom of the eighth, now 3-2 Milwaukee. Brandon Phillips gets all of this one. The solo shot to center off Brandon Kinsler ties things up at three. So to extras we go. Bottom of the tenth, runner on first, and Todd Frazier drops a double into the left field corner. Chris Heisey comes all the way home for the walk-off winner. The Brewers fall 4-3 the final. The Blackhawks look like a team that can get back to the finals. The defending Stanley Cup champs had a convincing game one win over the Wild, and they stayed hot today. In the first, Marion Hosa on the breakaway. He's stopped by Ilya Brizgalov, but Jonathan Taves there to bat it in for the Blackhawks. Chicago up 1-0. Third period, now 2-0 Hawks. Minnesota finally gets on the board. Clayton Stoner jumps the puck off to Cody McCormick for the goal. That makes it a one-goal game. But later, Hosa and Brian Bickle in a fast break. Hosa feeds the puck to Bickle, and he beats Brisgall of glove side. Chicago wins it 4-1, to one and they take a 2-0 series lead. Game three is Tuesday at Minnesota. The Sprint Cup Series rolled into Talladega this weekend. The historic track is known for providing lots of mayhem, and there was plenty this afternoon. I'm not sure if you'd call this fashion forward or what, but you got to love the effort. Lap 14, Brad Keselowski leading, but Danica Patrick gives him a little tip tap and sends him down the apron, and the yellow flag flies. Later, Keselowski can't shake that black cloud over him today. Lap 137, the number two shimmies and loses control. He gets into Trevor Bain, causing a huge multi-car pileup that collected 12 cars, including Wisconsin's Matt Kenseth. So with one lap to go, a caution flies on the final lap as well. Debris from Justin Allgaier's spin is on the track, so the field is frozen, and Denny Hamlin wins Talladega under caution. It's his first victory at a restrictor plate track. There were some amazing shots on the final day of the Wells Fargo Championship. On 15, Jim Furyk chips in from the rough and makes the 80-foot eagle to go to 13 under. That tied him for the lead. Martin Flores gets into the act on 10. He chips in from the fairway, and this one rolls all the way in for eagle and moves him to 13 under also. But the day belonged to J.B. Holmes. Holmes with the great approach on 10. That sets him up for birdie. He moved to 14 under and the solo lead. Holmes had brain surgery just a couple years ago and gets his first win since the surgery today. Next up is the Players' Championship. Football fans know the NFL draft is this week, but there's also a new chance to get your pigskin fix in the Northwoods. Semi-pro football has arrived in Rhinelander. The Tri-County Timberwolves will be making their debut this week. They're a new member of the Midwest Football League. The Timberwolves are a nonprofit, community-based organization. It's full-fledged tackle football with an eight-week regular season. Players are 18 and older and come from many different backgrounds. Some of the guys we have have never played football. They love the game and uh, want to play. Some guys have played college level and just haven't made it to that next level. And this is a potential stepping stone because there is game film. So they can let those Arena League teams and, and uh, Canadian teams see their film and possibly get a contract playing somewhere. I'm very confident in the guys that we have um, here right now. Our, our core group of guys that have started with us and have been with us since day one. They're doing a great job and I'm real proud of them. Um, I just wish that they could bring like, you know, five or six friends each. <laughs> they still have plenty of positions to fill. You can find more information on WJFW.com. The Timberwolves' first game is this Saturday at Rhinelander High School at 7 o'clock. Should be lots of fun. That's your sports. We'll be right back.